recently the subject of Black Heroes for Black History Month has come up. We've seen Charles Drew here feature in a number of newspapers. Unfortunately for Charles Drew, who is a man of well worth remembering, the editorial abilities of some newspaper um, writers today oh, and the editorial abilities of those editing them are poor. So Charles Drew, who's a genuine figure worthy of respect, gets cobbled in together with figures who are a bit more dubious or who are listed as inventors where it was, might be better to list them as people who perfected an invention or worked on it further. Unfortunately, popular science, in especially in red top tabloids, tends to benefit from what um, the late Sir Tara Pratchett and Professor Cohen, who worked with him on one book called Lies to Children, they simplify the very, the complicated nature of scientific progress and we get down to things like Einstein invented this, you know, the theory of relativity. It would be fairer to say that Einstein made grand strides in a particular area and that other people were moving in the same direction as well. But popular science, such as it is, simplifies such things. Professor Cohen and Terry Pratchett have an amusing point in one of their books where they note that um, going to college prepares students in sciences for unlearning things when they get to university. Returning to Charles Drew, we've also had the unpleasant suggestion that he's mostly white, so it's his white genes that contribute to him and he's not really a black man at all. To which I'm going to say one word, bollocks. Mr. Drew identified as a black man, and you can. And if anyone doesn't believe me, I'll do a further presentation and pull out literature and letters by him where he calls himself a Negro and talks of working for the Negro people to advance them. In any case, here's a short history of him. Charles Drew was born to a middle-class family in 1904 in Washington, D.C. Growing up, his parents impressed upon him the importance of academia, hard work and civic engagement. Charles, in fact, showed earlier an aptitude for sports more than academia at first. It seems to, that he reached a point in his life where his sister died of tuberculosis mixed with influenza and he himself was hospitalised, which spurred his interest in medicine. Uh, it tells you down further here, ba basically, the problems he faced at first with a, um, a career in medicine. After finishing Amherst, Charles knew he wanted to go to medical school, but his options as a black man were limited due to segregation. As with Amherst, Harvard's medical school admitted just a few black students each year, and Charles succeeded in gaining admission. However, the school wanted to defer his enrollment for a year. But Charles was eager to start his education. He ended up applying and being accepted into McGill University in Montreal, which had a reputation of having a less hostile climate for minority students. Charles continued to distinguish himself at McGill, winning women's awards and scholarships and eventually graduating second in his class with both an MD and CM Master of Surgery. Post-graduation, Charles was an intern and resident at Montreal Hospital, where he learned extensively about treating patients with transfusions. He had particular aspirations to gain a position at the Mayo Clinic, but was barred due to his race. Yeah, this virtually white man was barred due to his race. Never to be one to be held back, Charles continued to apply and was accepted as a faculty member at Howard University. Most important, though, I feel, for those who are like him um, taking jabs at him and using him to as a boy to beat in the endless culture camp of ethnicity and versus race. In 1938, uh, sorry, in 1940, Drew was involved with Blood for Britain, which was a scheme where he was appointed medical director. And at this point, Britain was suffering significant casualties at the hands of Germany due to heavy bombing, of course, because I was in need of plasma units for treatment. By the time the programme ended in 1941, the Blood for Britain programme sent more than 5,000 litres of plasma to Britain. So this man, who has sometimes been mocked in numerous presentations on forums, on websites, by members of the alt-right, or, or has been used to advance theories of of how only black people could only be intelligent if they are mostly white breed, as if that humans were dog breeds, a theory that seems to be very popular among followers of 
this sort of offshoot of Lysenkoism combined with Aryan blood and purity nonsense. This black man should, in his person, refute the nonsense that black people never invented anything other than the stick, as pronounced by, frankly, idiots. It should, the follow-up to it, though, is that the, the um, after the war, sorry, or during the war, blood from black people was at first banned from outright barred from donating blood and later only allowed to donate blood it was separated blood from donate by other races anyone who denies that ward saw himself as a black man or sorry drew saw himself as a black man should notice that charles left his post at that point in protest at this he tragically died quite young in 1950 after being involved in an in a car accident on his way to a conference, a, a death that's led to a, a urban myth that he was refused treatment because he was black. In Unfortunately, ironically, in this one case, it's not a case of him being black. He was so seriously injured, he would likely have died with it anyway. But his life sums up the separation of even the of black and white that applied even to those at the top end of the black class structure even though he was a highly educated black man in a position of relative authority, he was still seen as less than white people in terms of his blood. He's a man due some respect, especially for his, his role in the, in the Britain for Blood for Britain project. He's not a man who should be used to, to mock and sneer at or to advance racist agendas about... But of course, that will happen anyway, whatever I say. But in my own small way, perhaps I offer another point of view here.